students. Today we're talking about drive line angularity. We're going to focus on how drive line angularity affects the flow of our vehicle. So let's get busy and welcome to the lab. Okay, so one of the instruments we're going to use is a protractor. The protractor is going to measure the angle of our drive line angularity. So you're going to run into some math when you're doing it in this profession. So we're just looking at some basic math skills. As a matter of fact, we're going to do an example of how, I'm going to show you how we measure drive line angularity. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our system to make sure we got some air in the system. Cab height is going to affect our drive line angularity. Sometimes the driver will like to soften the ride, and so they'll, they'll mess with the, uh, the, uh, the air to make the, air, make, the, make the ride either softer or harder. Okay? So we've got air in the system, and let's just go ahead now and measure our drive shaft. See what the angles are. Okay, so in this system, we're looking at a slip joint, and um, we're going to look at basically three angles. We're going to look at the angle coming off of the transmission. We're going to look at the angle uh, from the transmission. We're going to look at the angle connecting this slip joint to the U-joint, and then we're going to look at the angle of the differential. So we're going to take three measurements to get our values. Okay, so here's our, um, our transmission, and we want to take the angle reading our transmission. From the transmission, we have a U-joint, and then that's going to form an angle from the transmission to our driveline shaft. This is a solid driveline shaft right here. And then from the driveline shaft, we have a center bearing, and then we have our U-joint and a slip joint. So let's go over to the board. I've already got the readings on our, our material here, so we're going to do the calculations on the board. Okay, so when you're doing drive line angularity, we define down as being positive and we define up as being negative. So in our case, let's suppose we had four down, four degrees down, and two degrees down, uh, four minus two degrees down is just two degrees. But suppose we had an angle that was up. So again, we still do the same thing, but instead of subtracting the two angles, when two angles are different, you're going to add. So instead of doing four minus two, let's suppose this was two degrees up. Now you do four plus two, which would give you six degrees, okay? So just to summarize that real quick, if the, both degrees are going down, you're going to subtract. If one is going down and one is going up, you're going to add them together. Okay, so our measurement, here's an example of how, just an example of how to do driveline angularity. Suppose we measure four degrees down on the transmission, and then we measure two degrees down on the solid drive line, solid drive line shaft. That creates a working angle between the transmission and the solid drive line. So to get that value, we can go four minus two says two degrees. That's the first working angle. Our second working angle is going to come from the solid drive line and the slip joint. In between, we have a center bearing. So we're going to go ahead and say, okay, well, that one is, let's suppose that this is 2 and this is 1. We've got 2 minus 1 equals 1 degree for our, 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 our next working angle. Now, we also have a third working angle from the slip joint and the differential. And let's suppose our differential was 3 degrees down. So we got one degree down from the slip joint, three degrees down from differential, three minus one equals two degrees. Okay, so there are some rules associated with driveline drive line angularity. And rule number one says that you must have at least a half a degree to one degree uh, at the, uh, uh, at the uh, driveline angle. Okay, so you gotta have at least a half degree to one degree so that you have some kind of rotation. If you don't have half a degree to one degree, you're going to ruin the, the U-joint, okay? So also, rule number two says that each end of the U-joint must be one degree within each other. So at both ends, it must be within one degree. So if one, if one U-joint is five, the other one should be four or six, but they have to be within one degree of each other. And rule number three states that it should be less than, the, work, the total work angle should be less than three degrees uh, for all the angles and that's for your speed. 
Uh, your, your drive mining shafts will attain somewhere between 30, 3,300, 3,000 RPMs. And at that speed, you need to have at least a minimum, no, no, more, than, no more than three degrees maximum for the, um, for the total working angle. All right? Thanks for watching.